okay so this is uh, how many of you remember the number of this lecture lecture 4 okay what do you think the probability is that l will come up correctly <laughs> it's really hilarious huh lecture 4 okay of uh, error control coding of course and we've been talking about generator and parity check matrices i'm going to give one last example to drive home a point and then we'll proceed okay so what's the example that we'll see the the example that i've been talking about which i said we'll carry through all through for a while for to introduce some basics uh, so let's see the first column in this is 1 1 0 1 0 0 Second row is I'm sorry. First row is one one zero one zero zero. Second row is zero one one zero one zero. Third row is one zero one zero zero one. Right. So each of the parity checks represent that P one is M zero plus M one. P two is M one plus M two, and P three is M zero plus M two. So what what is the what are the parameters of this code? This is a right block length is 6 that's very clean what is the message length 3 right in this case you have to be careful n minus k you know is 3 right which is the rank of the parity check matrix n minus k okay from n and n minus k you have to figure out k okay in this case it's very simple n minus k is the same as k but in other cases it may might be different okay so it's a 6 3 code okay and uh, suppose you have to list the code words of this code right one way of doing it is to convert to the generator matrix and take all linear combinations of the rows or you can do it just with this right where do you know the message will be the message is going to be here right m0 m1 m2 the first three columns are going to correspond to the message bits and the last three columns are going to correspond to the three parity bits right so you just try all the eight different possible messages on top of the first three columns and then calculate the parities that will satisfy each of these checks so you can just do it by hand it's the same as doing that p transpose i and then doing linear combinations it's the exact same thing you're just doing it in a different way itself okay so you can do that and list out all the code words of the code so if you say the code is c what are the code words that it that it contains the first code word of course is 0 0 0 0 and then you can keep listing it suppose i put 0 0 as the message right so you notice what are the parities which will have to be 1 which parities will be 0 and which parity will be 1 if 0 0 1 is my message right p0 will be 0 and p1 and p2 will both be 1 do you quickly see that okay, this is a useful trick to learn early on when you are looking at parity check matrices how do you quickly figure out what the code word should be right did you see how i figured out figured this out right once m2 is 1 P1 has to be one and P2 has to be one, right? So other other things are all zero, right? So this is the only way in which it can satisfy. The next message is probably zero one zero. If I do that, what are the parities which will be one and which the parities will be zero? Yeah, one one zero, right? So you see, so you see the parity as a vector will actually be the combinations of the columns here, right? So it's a very nice way of looking at it. Then zero one one would be one zero one. Sorry. Zero one one would be one zero one. Okay, do you see how I quickly figure it out? Zero one one. You have to XOR these two columns together. The M one column and the M two column should be XOR. If you XOR that, you will get one zero one, and that has to correspond to the parity, right? So that's a quick way of figuring out these things. Okay, and then one zero zero will be one zero one. Okay, yeah, I think I made did I make a mistake? No, it's fine. One zero one, and. Uh, What else do I have? One zero one will be one one zero. Oh my goodness! Keep doing the same thing. One zero one will be one one zero. One one zero will be zero one one, and then one 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 will be zero zero zero. Okay. So you notice. So that's a quick way of writing it down. It's just a simple trick. I mean, if you're not comfortable with this. rewrite the generator matrix and just take all combinations of rows that's another way of doing it this will help you out in some cases okay 
All right, so so that's that's all I wanted to do about generator matrices and parity check matrices. If there's something that's disturbing you, now is a good time to ask me. Okay, if there's something uh, that you've thought about and didn't make sense, if you're in the habit of looking at your notes long before the exams, you might you might notice something. If there's nothing disturbing, I'm going to keep keep moving along and we'll move to the decoder side. Okay. All right. So a couple of administrative announcements. I think. Uh, I have I have a reasonable list of people with me I think which is quite seems to be quite uh, reasonable I have to I have to get the website started once I, once the website starts I'll put all the homeworks in there even now I mean all the homeworks for the whole whole course from last time I'll put it up maybe I'll add some problems to it <coughs> as we go along for now we'll have problems okay that'll be a good source of problems other than that I don't know if there's a cheap book available out there I'll encourage you to pick up problems from books and look it up but uh, that homeworks should be a good source of problems for you if you want to if you want to test what you've been learning okay so let's move on to the decoder side okay so the decoder side will give us a lot of interesting insights into what else is important in this code okay so right now we've been seeing for linear code pretty much the only property we've seen are the block length and the dimension right so it's only so far we can go with that so what else is important in the code and that that's where the decoder will enter the picture okay so i'm going to redraw this diagram Okay, when we had the message M, which was encoded by a, with a say NK code, okay, linear code if you want, then we got a code word C, which went through a, let's suppose a binary symmetric channel with transition probability P, okay, and then you would have got a received vector R, and now you have to decode, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to write down a description for the decoder, okay. And will be a little bit different when we write down the decoder. Previously, when I wrote down, I said the decoder has to figure out what M was. I'll say, so to really get to the core of the problem, we'll define the decoder as something which produces C hat. What would C hat be now? Which is a estimate of the transmitted code word. Okay. So the advantage with this now is, what this does is basically takes you from code word to code word, which means the encoder does not matter at all. Okay, you can replace the encoder, the decoder will not change. All you have to change is what you do from C hat to get the M hat back. Okay, so that's an advantage. And it also very important because it captures the most important property. See, the code word is what goes through the channel. And anything you want to optimize should be at the code word level. What you do from the message to the code word is usually not very relevant. Okay, so the code word is what's important. So that's the important thing. So, so as we saw before, this is one of two par k possibilities, right? This is k bits, right? The message M is just k bits, one of two par k possibilities. And the code word C is n bits, even though it's n bits, it's how many possibilities? One of two par k possibilities, once again, it was the one to one map, right? We said the code word was a list of two par k vectors. But what do we know happens after the binary symmetric channel? You can get two par n possibilities, okay? But what do you think will happen? Do you think all the two par n possibilities will be equally likely? No. Yeah, it cannot be, right? If there's equally likely, there's really no point in transmission and reception and all that. Might as well give up, right? It will not be equally likely. There will be something that will happen. What do you think will be the most likely received vectors are? And just based on the binary symmetric channel probability, it flips a bit with probability p, and usually p is less than half. Okay, so it's always you take p to be less than half. So let me ask an interesting question. What do you do if p is greater than half? Uh, yeah, just rename your 1 and 0 and 0 as 1 at the other end and you'll get have another channel with p less than half. So p greater than half is really not a unique different case. p less than half is what's interesting. So so once you have p less than half, what do you think are the most likely received vectors are? The code, the code words, right? Do you see that? The code words were the transmitted vectors and since p is less than half, you're not going to be flipping with very high probability, right? So you're very likely to get the code word itself, some code word itself. And then after the code words, what will be most likely? Vectors which have one bit flip from the code word. Why? See, anytime you flip, you are doing something which is a less probable event. Okay, so what is more likely is going to be code words and vectors that are one bit flip away from the code word, two bit flip away from the code word, likewise. Okay, if you have a vector which is many flips away from any code word, it's very li less likely that you'll receive it. Okay, so in case now, if you want to write down a probability distribution for R over all the set of 2 power n n bit vectors it will not be uniform clearly and it will peak at the code words okay at each code word it will have the maximum probability which will also be the same okay 
right all those things are simple things you can figure out based on the uh, based on the probabilities of the binary symmetric channel okay so now what is the task of the decoder the decoder is basically a function which goes from 0 1 n to what so now that i say c hat it will be actually the code c okay so let me call this code as c okay it has to go from 0 1 n to c okay so without any other consideration how many such functions can you have right what is what, what do i mean by a function from 0 1 n to c a okay, function as an input which is an n bit vector every time you give it an n bit vector what does it have to give out some vector from the code okay without any other consideration how, in how many ways can you do this 2 power n 2 power n 2 power n k right am i right or wrong okay to each to each vector to each n bit vector i can assign any code word any one of 2 power k code words so i have to now do that 2 power n times so it will be 2 power 2 power am i right or am i wrong 2 power k raised to the power n or 2 power n no 2 power n whole power k which is 2 power n anyway do the calculation i think it is 2 power k raised whole thing raised to the power 2 power n which will be 2 power k 2 power n okay so that will be the answer but that's a lot of things when you can easy, easily rule out a lot of things right if you receive a code word what do you think the c hat will be if r equals a code word what do you think your c hat will be the exact same code word right so you wouldn't assign it to anything else so all those functions will go theoretically they are there you don't have to worry about any of them okay but what you would really like is what to pick that function which will give you least error right that's what i want i don't want to pick any function i want to pick that function or maybe there are more than one functions like that it can also happen okay that that will happen we'll see some cases where there can be more than one function that fun one of those functions which will give me the least possible error okay what's error now okay so my figure of merit is very important probability of c not equal to c hat is error okay so this is probability of block error Just give me one minute. Let me write this down. Yes. I can understand why you chose C hat instead of M hat, and why is C hat more optimal than M hat? I didn't say C hat was more optimal. I could first, first of all, do you understand? Do you accept that this is the one way of doing it? There's nothing wrong with this, right? So you can do C hat. The thing that this frees me up from the encoder, right? If I give out C hat. Oh, it's all very advanced. I'm going to come to that soon enough. Please wait. Be patient. Okay. So, so I could I could put down m hat here, but I'm limiting myself by the encoder choice. Then I'll have to do the joint encoder decoder design. I don't know who knows. I mean, you'll see if you actually do that. Also, this is a good enough thing to do. You can decide on the decoder first, since it's anyway a one-to-one -one mapping. You can definitely decide on what code word was transmitted and then go back to the message. That's also optimal. It doesn't lose anything. But what it does in the meantime is it tells you what's really important. What's really important is the set of code words and not how you went from the message to the code word. You can do that mapping in any way you want. What's important is the set of code words. You'll see later on as we go along. Okay, this brings out a very important problem. So what? <laughs> what I said makes no sense, man. I mean, you, you have to do it this way. Okay. <laughs> Even if you end up just start with those kind of assumptions, you'll end up with uh, something like this. You don't worry about it. Okay. So out of all these functions that you can possibly have, I want to pick that function which will minimize my probability of block error. From here you will see you will go to this maximum likelihood decoding which will take you to some minimum distance decoding for the BSC, all those things will happen. Okay? We will go to that slowly. Okay? So I want, I want to introduce that. But this is my objective. Okay? I want to pick that function which will minimize my probability of block error. Okay? So this is my uh, main, main objective. Okay, so let's see. So, so I'm, what I'm going to do next is a little bit of a derivation to show something called distance is important. Okay, distance between or something called Hamming distance between two binary vectors is important. If you are already convinced that it's important, you don't have to pay much attention to this derivation. 
okay so this is the derivation which will tie up the that function to the function that we are looking for the optimal decoding function to the distance properties okay so just to derive that the distance is important and it's an important measure for the binary symmetric chain okay so let's see let's look at this probability that c hat is not equal to c okay so when i when i deal with these probabilities so when can i say talk about these probabilities i need random variables I have to define the probability space I have to do all that carefully right what i'll do is i won't do all that okay i'll simply take the same notation that i have which i have for code words and just whenever i need random variables i'll simply use the same thing okay but that's a big abuse of notation you should never say probability of x when x is a random variable and a vector you can't keep using it interchangeably right you have to say probability that a random variable equals some value okay that that is what makes sense you can't just say probability of a random variable right you have to say what what it is equal to okay but i won't do that i'll simply i'll simply go through uh, go through this without 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 worrying about that okay so let's see so first thing i'm going to do is okay so this is a probability that says c hat is not equal to c so one of two par k code words might be transmitted first thing i want to do is condition on what that code word could have been over the two par k possibilities and figure it out okay so i'm going to say this is equal to summation over some I'll, I'll write down summation over u belonging to c all code words probability that c hat not equal to u given uh, okay i need a given here given c equals u times probability that c equals u is that fine that's a very simple expression that i wrote down conditioning on what code word that i actually transmitted and what do you think this probability that c equals u is going to be unconditioned what's the probability that i get yeah is it reasonable to say it's 1 by 2 power k yeah if my messages are all equally likely then i'm going to say this is equal to 1 by 2 power k and any minimization i do over c hat not equal to c should actually be a minimization of the conditional probability and not the right do you accept that yeah you don't care really about the other term since that's anyway a constant it's going to come out so you really need to worry about minimizing this case so you can show i mean if you can if you don't if you're not convinced uh, think about this minimizing probability that c hat is not equal to c is equivalent to minimizing probability that c hat is not equal to u given c equals u for each u Okay, so you'll have to do that. So once you do that, you will get this. Is there a question here? Yeah, capital C is a set of all code words. I'm sorry. Thanks for reminding me. I think I I thought I wrote that down in the previous page. Maybe it was not clear. So what is this C? This is the code. Okay, set of all code words. So I mean, even if the way I write it, the size is not very clear. If I, if I put a bar below, it's a vector. If I just write a capital looking letter, it's it's the code. Okay, so I'm actually interested in minimizing this conditional probability. Okay, so if you do that, you will actually get a minimization. Okay, it makes no sense for one code word alone to pick something that doesn't minimize that, right? Because you can go back and pick that again, and you'll show it'll be lesser. Okay, it's a technical thing that you can show, but this will be this will work out to the same thing. You can easily see from that expression that this is the best thing to do. For each u, you have to minimize that conditional probability. Now I'm going to bring in my binary symmetric channel right so what is this c c was let's try to evaluate this guy how am i going to evaluate this guy suppose this u is let's say u0 okay so let me be careful here okay no before i do this let me just let me do the other thing and then i'll come back sorry yeah how did i directly say that you really want me to explain this let me do this after the class if you want to come and talk to me okay okay so now let's let's deal with this uh, let me let's deal with this uh, did i did i write it down correctly okay so i'm trying to figure out what the next step is okay so let me do this equivalence then i think this should work out okay 
this is the same as can I write 1 minus probability that c equals c hat equals u given okay I'm minimizing this over all u in c okay I think I'm getting lost here this is what happens when you do you want to do this off the top of your head we just spend a couple of minutes and do this Somehow I have to get R into the picture, man. R is not entering the picture at all. What's happening? Hmm. Hmm? No, no, no. I think it's C hat. Wait, wait, give me one minute. I think I used to know this. There's also a place where you have to do use base rule and all that. I don't know why this thing is working out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I know what I have to do. Okay, so I have to bring in R also. So. I think I got myself into a nasty soup by not bringing an R properly. Okay. 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 So I think let me let me let, let I'm sorry I'm sorry for this. I think I know where I went wrong. So let's uh, I think I have to condition this on R. I think I have to condition this on R. Only then I'll get the right. Uh... Okay, so the first conditioning should be on R. Okay, so I think I jumped a little bit. Apologize for that. First conditioning should be on R, and then I need to. Get R into the picture and then write something. I think Mukundan, you have a lot of work to do when I write it down. Okay, so let's condition on R first. Okay, and then get this R out of the picture. Get R into the picture and then I'll do this. Sorry for this. Okay. Yeah, I think this is the, yeah, this is where the argument comes. Okay, suppose you want to minimize probability that C hat not equal to C. You can show, you have to minimize, yeah, now, now this works out. Minimize probability that C hat is not equal to C. I think there's no U, I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah, I think that's where the mistake came. Maybe there was something wrong. C hat not equal to C given R for each R. Right? I think this is what I wanted to say first. Sorry for that. So you have to minimize this guy for each R. There's no sense in not minimizing this for each R. Right? So if you have to minimize this, it's better to minimize this for each R. Because if you don't, then you can you can you can show that there's a better choice. Okay, so minimizing this will be same as minimizing this for each R. Okay? Apologize for that. Now, once you do this. Then you can start with this expression and that expression is not too bad to deal with. Okay, so what am I going to say now? So, so let me look at this expression uh, closely once again and minimizing probability that C hat is not equal to C given R is the same as maximizing what? Maximizing probability that C hat equals C given R. Okay. So this is the same, there's no problem here. This will be 1 minus that. So obviously I can do that maximization also. Okay, yeah, from here I can I can do something very easily. Okay. So now let's use base rule now and try to evaluate this. Okay, so what, what happens when you write it with base rule? Probability that C hat equals C given R is the same as probability that 
receive r given c equals c hat okay then you would multiply with probability that c equals c hat okay divided by probability of r okay so that's what is this expression okay all right so now i'm trying to maximize this guy right okay so notice which are the terms that are going to be important here see this term will it depend on what c hat is right or c is it doesn't really matter right whatever c is you will get a probability of r which is not going to change okay so similarly here this is also a constant right all these things will go away okay so when you want to maximize probability that c equals c given r assuming all these things are going to drop out it's the same as maximizing probability of probability of r given c equals c hat okay so that 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 gives me what's called the maximum likelihood decoder okay so if this argument was not very convincing to you i apologize for it it's uh, it's not very well prepared for this so i think this that shows okay so you want to maximize probability of r given c equals c hat okay okay so this is over all c hat belonging to c this is what you want to do okay so r is your received vector you try all the c hats in c and pick that c hat which gives you a maximum for the probability of r given c equals c hat you know i mean made a messy way through it but finally i think i got the right answer okay so how do you pick your c hat at the decoder you go through each and every code word in your code and calculate this probability probability of r given c equals c hat and then pick that c hat which gives you a minimum maximum probability okay this is the maximum likelihood decoder okay so the c hat is a little bit misleading c hat you want to write down as the final output of your code word so a better way of writing it is the following okay a better expression is the following I'm sorry so far i've not used the assumption that p is less than half i've not come to that at all p doesn't play a picture it will play a picture so play a role soon okay a better way of writing it is this notation c hat is argument of the maximum u belonging to c probability of r given c equals u okay so this is a very compact and nice way of writing down a maximum likelihood decoder okay so the final decoded code word is the argument of the maximum what do i mean by argument of the maximum okay that u which maximizes that expression okay probability of r given c equals u okay so now you might wonder is that probability evaluatable can you find the probability probability of r given c equals u you can find that probability i'll show you how you find that it's not very difficult i'm sorry just give me one minute yes you can show since all the terms are positive no but all of them are positive so you have to minimize each term yeah i understand for for minimizing that you have to minimize each of these conditional terms because all the terms are positive right even though they are not equal they are all positive they all add up so if you have one decoder in which the conditional is not minimum i would go to that point adjust it so that that condition becomes minimum then you will get the least so this is fine that's a fine argument it's not it's not wrong what's the confusion so when you write like this uh, some other terms increase that won't happen man don't worry about it. why why do you say that will happen you don't suppose, have to suppose r no 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 i think no that will not see that that will not that will that will only involve given r no given that you received r i think you see you see the point i'll have a policy for given that i received r i mean it won't change anything else if, if the r changes my decoder completely changes right i i produce some other output 
it's not tied up do you understand what i'm saying so this probability this conditional probability sir give an example suppose a particular rsi okay is it timing distance wait wait let's let's take this outside of class okay but but i'm convinced that this is correct see you understand for for a particular r i have an algorithm which will give me my c hat right if the r is different i have another method some something else which will give me my c hat my policy is different right so this probability will not will not be affected by what i do for another r it's given r so it's very clear don't worry about it you have to minimize each of these conditionals to minimize the total okay so okay all right so let's look at this probability once again closely this says is the probability of r given c equals u okay so this is the probability that i want to evaluate how am i going to evaluate it what's being transmitted is u okay so what is u the vector u which is let's say u0 u1 till u n minus 1 this was the vector that was transmitted this is going into the bsc with say error probability p okay what's coming out is r right r is r0 r1 <coughs> r n minus 1 is that clear this is the situation this is what's happening what is the bsc going to do it's going to take u0 it's going to flip it with probability p and it's going to retain it with probability 1 minus p so what do i know each ri will be equal to ui with probability what 1 minus p and it will be equal to say let me say ui bar with probability p right what is ui bar now it's the complement of u okay it will flip it with probability p okay so given r and given u right probability of r you know what r is r was the received vector given that the transmitted code word is u this probability is very very trivial to evaluate okay right how do how do you evaluate it you you look at each r if it was flipped you put a value p next to it if it is not flipped you put a value 1 minus p next to it and then multiply all of those together you will get this okay so probability of r given i'll simply write u okay this is p times what what will you have here number of places where r and u agree right so that's the that's the exponent here now disagree i'm sorry number of places of disagreement right and then what 1 minus p to the power n minus this k okay is that clear okay okay so this number of places of disagreement between two vectors is what's called the hamming distance of two binary vectors and you say it plays and you see it plays a very key role in the decoding over a binary symmetric channel okay so that's why the hamming distance makes sense and it's introduced okay so let's introduce the hamming distance hamming distance i'll use this notation d sub h of uv is the number of places where places of disagreement sorry between u and v okay yes i'm sorry you want me to repeat the probability okay let's take an example suppose u is 0 0 0 and suppose r is 1 1 0 what's the probability of r given u in the first instance you would have transmitted a 0 and you would have received a 1 what's the probability of that happening p in the second instance you would have transmitted a 0 and you received a 1 what's the probability of that happening p the third instance you transmitted a 0 and what did you receive 0 again what's the probability of that happening 1 minus p now how do i know all three are independent well, that's the assumption of the binary symmetric channel i said whatever happens to the first bit does not influence the other bits so what's the total probability of r given you, you can multiply all these three individual conditional probabilities and you'll get p times p times 1 minus p which is p square into 1 minus p is that clear so the same thing i wrote down for the general case p to the power number of places where there is disagreement 
and 1 minus p to the power n minus that n is the total length okay so it's a very simple form so that's the hamming distance definition okay so with the hamming distance notation i can write probability of r given u is what p to the power hamming distance between r and u times 1 minus p to the power n minus the hamming distance between r and u is that clear okay so i'm slowly getting to what you were suggesting that the decoder should do it should try to maximize the likelihood of receiving r given that a particular code was transmitted okay and that would eventually turn out to be related to the hamming distance between r and each of those code words under consideration which is u okay so let's see so let me let me rearrange this a little bit so you see you notice this d power dh r u is showing up in two terms maybe i can collect both of them together okay so this you can write as 1 minus p to the power n <coughs> times what p by 1 minus p okay so here is where the p being less than half will play a role okay so this is what i wrote down since p is less than half which will be greater p or 1 minus p 1 minus p will be greater so p by 1 minus p will be a fraction which is less than 1 okay it has to be that right remember that we'll use that soon enough okay so now what am i trying let me remind you what is it that we are trying we are trying to find the best possible code word which will minimize my probability of error which i said has to be the argument of the maximum over all u and c probability of r given c or given u i'm sorry right this we agreed right now i've shown this probability is nothing but what some constant which i don't care see 1 minus p to the power n will not change if i change u right there is no dependence on u what's the only thing which will change okay so i can say this will be completely say proportional to p by 1 minus p to the power the hamming distance between r and u okay okay so for instance i'm trying to maximize p by 1 minus p to the power dh of r u maybe i'll take logarithms right maybe i'll take logarithms to move the the hamming distance away from the exponent but what what kind of a function is log is it, it's an increasing function so the maximization will remain a maximization even if i take log okay so this is the same as argument of maximum over u belonging to c logarithm of this what's the logarithm of this dh of r u can i ignore the other term i have to be very careful there because it could become negative right if it's positive yes i can ignore it 1 minus p to the power n i know is definitely positive whatever value i take but i have to hold on to this log p by 1 minus p till i make sure that it is positive or negative okay is it positive or negative log p by 1 minus p it will be negative because p by 1 minus p is less than 1 okay so what should i do to the maximum i should convert it into a minimum okay since it's negative so so i see finally my c hat becomes argument over minimum argument of minimum of minimum over u belonging to c the hamming distance between r comma u okay so there's a quick definition it was meant to be a quick definition as i said if you are convinced that the hamming distance between the received word and the code words is important you don't really need to understand this definition but this is how theoretically it works okay that it's optimal to do distance decoding a okay? distance based on decoding based on hamming distance okay so let me go back to the proof once again and visit each of these things and just re just remind you of all the assumptions that we made the first place where we made an assumption was here okay what was the assumption all code words are equally likely okay that is such an assumption that we made okay i said that was a constant i threw it out only that happens only when all the code words are equally likely in practice in many situations you might have some idea about this probability you might know that some code words are more likely than the others okay so you in communication system you have several stages of coding etc in many stages you might know that the code word is more likely to have been something else in those cases it is not optimal to drop this okay you have to remember that 
Okay, so that's crucial. Okay, so that's the some that's the that's the first simplification we made. But once that is that is clear, then you can obviously come to the likelihood and simply try to maximize the likelihood. Okay, up to here there is no problem. There is no further assumption other than the code words being equally likely. Okay, how did we bring in the distance? We brought in the distance only because we were dealing with binary symmetric channels. If the channel was different, you will probably get some other distance or maybe something else depending on the the conditional distributions okay anything can happen here the conditional distribution was nice and binary and symmetric so we got this wonderful having distance simplification we finally got there okay so as we go along in the course towards the later half of the course we will relax some of these assumptions and we'll generalize it at that point i'll come back and revisit this you should not be surprised you should not be surprised that this minimum distance decoder which we thought was optimal all along is suddenly not optimal anymore it's only optimal under these two assumptions okay all right but nevertheless this is a great result okay so imagine from all those huge number of functions that i had for the decoder what have i come to i have come to just a specific method of finding what c hat should be okay right eventually we'll see we can even simplify it slightly further for the linear code etc but for now this is a nice uh, formula to keep in mind Okay, so let me illustrate this with an example for the 6-3 code. Okay, and I'll show you how, you how you work it. Once you get convinced and you're comfortable with this notion, we'll we'll look at this Hamming distance more closely and figure out what's the relationship between the distance of the code words and all that. Okay, distance will be a very important measure for our code. We'll we'll may iron that out after we go along. Okay, so let's take this example. We'll start with one of the simplest examples out there. I'll take the n equals 3 repetition code. Okay, right. My code just consists of two vectors, 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. Notice I'm not even talking about the encoder. The encoder is probably clear to you. Okay, I'm not talking about it. Just the code is enough, right? For the decoder, I have to start with the code. The encoder is, 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 is an afterthought. Okay, so let's see. My decoder, how will I describe the decoder? What's the best way of describing a decoder? I could have a table, right? A table which tells me how you go from R to C hat. Okay, so that's my decoding table. Let's say I'm going to put R here. I'm going to put C hat here. Okay. Okay. So what's my method? My method is going to be ML or maximum likelihood decoding. Okay. So over the binary symmetric channel. Okay. Suppose I say R is 0, 0, 0. Well, how will you do maximum likelihood decoding? Okay. So I know it's trivial, but let's go through the process. Okay. So I'll find the Hamming distance between 0, 0, 0 and each of the two code words and pick that code word which gives me the minimum Hamming distance. Okay, so here there are only two code words. You're 0 away from one code word and 3 away from the other code word. It's very clear. You're going to say C hat is 0, 0, 0. Okay, so likewise, spend a couple of minutes and keep doing it on your own. Don't look at the screen. I will do it also, but spend a couple of minutes and try and do it on your own. It's, it's quite simple. Okay, so you see it's also, I mean the maximum likelihood decoder also makes very simple direct intuitive sense, right? You're transmitting 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. If you received something with two or more ones, what are you going to say it is? It's 1, 1, 1, right? Otherwise you're going to say it's 0, 0, 0, okay? It makes simple, very clear intuitive sense, okay? Now I'm going to ask you a slightly difficult problem, okay? How will you compute the probability of error for the maximum likelihood decoder? Okay, it says maximum likelihood decoder. It sounds like the perfect decoder. Will it make an error? Yes. Yeah, of course, it will make an error. Will it make an error with non-zero probability? Yes, of course, with non-zero probability. Okay, and you can even compute it. Okay, what is it that you cannot do? You cannot find any other decoder which will achieve a lower probability than the error probability of this decoder. That's the only thing you cannot do. Okay, it doesn't say probability of error is zero. Okay, it only says you can never find any other mapping from R to C, R to C, which will give you a lower probability of error that's what it says okay you should remember that okay even when you receive even when r is 0 0 0 there can be error with some probability okay right all three bits could have been flipped right you can have an error okay 
I want you to spend a couple of minutes and try and find the probability of error okay, for this decoder. Okay, it's an interesting exercise. When I do it for the general case, it will help if you think about it on your own and try to do it. Okay, It's a simple situation. Try to find the probability of error. So this is once again a test for you, you know, I mean, do you know enough probability, right? This is a test for you. If you see yourself getting into loops, then something very basic. Okay, for evaluating probability of error this way, it's, it's better to do the conditioning that I did wrongly first, you know, I mean, when I tried the derivation, I did the conditioning on the code words, which was not the right first thing to do. You condition on received vector only, then you'll get a nice code word definition. For evaluating probability of error given a code word, you should condition on what the code word transmitted would have been. That's a very simple way of doing it. It will give you an answer. Or if you're very smart, you'll immediately see the only way the error will happen is if the channel makes two errors or three errors. Okay, So you can use all these fancy tricks and come up with the answer. Okay, So if you do that, you'll see probability of error will be, right? Probability that the channel makes two errors, which, will, which can happen in three different ways. With prob each with probability p square into 1 minus p and then it could make three errors which can happen in only one way with probability p power 3 right it's a simple situation to add up if you want you can add it up you'll get 3 p squared minus 2 p power 3 okay have we achieved anything by coding and decoding in this way have we achieved anything what have we achieved exactly p square is going to be less than p right why he is less than 1 okay that's enough okay but there are disturbing things there is a factor 3 that's it's multiplying and then there's a minus 2 minus 2 p power 3 you are happy right i mean you don't care right it's going to only reduce things but even otherwise p power 3 will not play a role when p square is in the picture right you are typically thinking of p being what p will not be 0.4 or 0.45 then you then you are really in a bad shape right you are thinking of p being 0 0.01, right? 0 0.01 at least, right? 1% of the time maybe you have errors and then you're trying to put in a code to fi fix it. 0 0.01, what is my probability of block error now going to be? Right? 10 power minus 4, right? 3 times 10 power minus 4. I can safely ignore the other term. It's not, it's not, won't hit me too hard. So I've achieved something, right? I've gone from P to P squared, which is better. What is the penalty I've paid? Rate is 1 by 3. Okay? So you notice rate is 1 by 3 and probability of error has become p square okay you might wonder is this a good enough trade off can i go to a rate 1 by 3 for a probability of error p square it depends on the situation right you have to evaluate the situation in reality and see if this is a good enough trade off you will see in many cases this will not be a very good trade off we'll see later on this will be a bad trade off okay but anyway this is at least a trade off you have something right you don't, it's not like you don't have anything to deal Okay, so next example we are going to see is slightly more complicated. It's going to be the 6-3 example and I'm going to ask you to do this but not the complete table, right, or a partial table. Let's take the 6-3 example. Okay, the 6-3 example. I was told I can cut and paste very easily so I'm going to go back. To the time when I wrote down all the code words of this code. Okay, so I was told I can copy like this. Okay then say copy and I can go back to the
go back here and say paste no 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 paste right paste ah there you go it's brilliant okay so this is my example for the code right so so let's see if i have to now make a table for the decoder for the optimal decoder between r and c hat it's a lot of work right first of all how many how many entries will you have 64 okay so that's that's a lot okay but on top of that figuring out what c hat you have to choose for each r is also a little bit non trivial it's quickly getting a little bit non trivial it's not trivial anymore in the previous case for instance some cases will be very trivial suppose i say r is this <coughs> right yes. which is this is a code word that will give you the minimum hamming distance from all zeros the all zeros is already there right so obviously there cannot be any other code word which is distance zero from zero so you can easily decide this will be all zero likewise for each of the code words r being equal to each of the code words you can happily write down what it will be okay there's no problem but suppose i say suppose i say something like this let's say i do this okay suppose i tell you r is this i mean one cannot immediately see what the closest code word will be right can you can you quickly see <laughs> okay okay maybe in this case you can quickly see okay so but even otherwise you see it's slightly non trivial you keep if i keep throwing out r at you you can't you can't quickly do it okay right it is it is a little bit non trivial it's not so uh, so easy to do okay now suppose i say i get i go to a 1000 comma 500 code okay okay suppose i give you a g which is 500 by 1000 and define some encoder okay and you know what the optimal decoder is right you have to, to go through <laughs> all the 2 power 500 code words we obviously you can't do it this just doesn't even enter the picture okay while we know the optimal method we don't know if it can be implemented very efficiently okay so efficient implementation of ml you'll see will be a problem that will stay with us for a long time okay so it's a very difficult thing to do in reality but it can be done in, in many cases okay efficient implementation is is going to be non trivial it's, it will not be a very trivial thing to implement uh, efficient uh, decoder okay okay so by the way the decoder that we've been doing okay the arg min of u u belonging to c d the hamming distance between uh, r and u is called the nearest neighbor decoder or one can even call it the minimum distance decoder but nearest neighbor decoder is very uh, depending on whether you like british or american spelling nearest neighbor decoder okay so this is the name for it i didn't officially name it we'll name it the nearest neighbor decoder it happens to be the maximum likelihood decoder for the binary symmetric channel okay that's the uh, that's the decoder all right okay so there's a very useful graphical tool to understand understand nearest neighbor decoder graphical tool as in there's a picture that you can draw which will kind of tell you what nearest neighbor decoder is doing okay and you will see the role the hamming distance plays and from there we'll define some important quantities for a code sorry yeah we, I'll, I'll talk about the cube if you come the sphere you can call it if you want okay we'll come to that slowly okay so what we'll imagine is we'll imagine there is some space where all this set of n bit vectors are sitting okay so here's a graphical view of nearest neighbor decoding which is very important <coughs> Okay. So, this will give you a nice idea of what is happening. Okay. So, I am going to draw a big circle here, but you have to imagine this circle as some space which contains all the n bit binary vectors. Okay. So, it is not a continuous circle or anything like that, it has got all n bit binary vectors. How many points does it have? 2 power n. Okay. So, all those points are there. Maybe I will, okay, I will not, uh, maybe, maybe I will draw. Maybe I'll draw with some other color. I think there's a color. No, no, we choose color. I think this should be color, no? No, it says medium, thick. Oh, that's highlighting. Okay, I don't know. Let me not bother with it. It's got two power n points, so maybe I'll I'll put them as dots. Okay, there's lots of things around. 
Okay. If you are an expert in Rangoli or Kolam or something, you can, you can do it in a nice pattern, but <coughs> it doesn't matter for us. Okay. So that's that's the two power n vectors, n bit binary vectors. Okay. So that's how it is. Out of these two power n vectors, my code consists of how many vectors? Two power k vectors. Okay. So this, since my code is very important, I'm going to say I'm going to denote my code words with a star. Okay. They are those are my stars, right? My code words are my stars. Okay. So among all these stars, you have Shah Rukh Khan, who is the all zero code word, and maybe you have the other people. If you want, you can name them any way you like. But these are my code words. Okay, I know when I transmitted, the transmitted vector was actually one of these stars. It was not, it was not any point on the, on this space. Okay, but when I receive, what can I receive? I can receive any point on this space. So suppose say I received this point. Okay, what do I have to do when I decode? I have to find the Hamming distance. From the stars, okay. So I find the distance from the stars. How far am I, am I from this star? How far am I from this star? How far am I from this star, etc. Okay. So I find all these distances, and then I go to the nearest code word, which is the nearest neighbor decode. Okay. So I decide this is my transmitted code word. If this was my received code word, R, received vector R. Okay. So if this was my received vector R, my transmitted code word is going to be C hat. Okay. So this is a graphical way of visualizing what is actually happening. I, I'm, I'm somewhere in this space. I look for the nearest star, okay, and then I say that is my transmitted code word. Do you have a question? <laughs> no, no, no. There's no difference between the stars and the other dots. In this. They, those are my code words. Those are my designated code words. They are again n-bit vectors. They are also n-bit vectors. There's nothing different about the stars. Okay, just I've chosen them to be in my code, so they are special. Okay. Stars are also human beings, right? Shah Rukh Khan is also a man. Okay, so there's no difference, except that they are they've been chosen to be the code words. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. This view is very important. Okay, this is a very graphical, nice view, visualization that you can do of what's actually happening. Okay, even when you go to n equals thousand and k equals five hundred, this picture can can be in your head. Okay, there'll be so many stars and there'll be many more. Regular dots, okay, but you can always picture this. So that's what you have to do, okay. All right. So. Hmm. Yes, total number of bits. What is the idea? As the bits are there, yes. Yes. No, 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 no. Don't think of it that way. If you have, if you have, suppose I'm looking at n-bit vectors. How many total n-bit vectors are there? 2 power n. That's the correct way of looking at it. Okay. Now, what, what do I mean by 2 power k out of the 2 power n? My code words are only 2 power k vectors. Okay. So that's, that's the way. So in an n-k code, I don't understand what your question is. I think. <laughs> See, for instance, I wrote a code down 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. How many possible 8 bit vectors are there, 3 bit vectors are there, 8 right, out of the 8 I chose 2, be, two to be my to in my code, 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1, you understand, right, there is no code word which is k bit in size, which is the code word which is k bit in size, all code words are n bit, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, both of them are 3 bits, which is the code word which is 1 bit. There is no k bit code word. K bit things are message. So k bits out of the n bits will be the message. That's okay. It's different. I don't understand. I still don't understand what your question was. Okay. Maybe maybe outside you can uh, we can talk about this. Okay. All right. So now you see. Now you can see. You can in this picture you can easily see the distance between the stars will be very important. Right. You are starting off at the star. You know when you transmitted, it was a code word. Okay, and when you received, you can be anywhere. But why will the distance between the code words themselves matter? If you stray too far away, you can get closer to some other code word. Okay, so whether your decoder succeeds or not depends very much on the distance between the 
code words in the worst case right <coughs> what can happen there might be so many errors that you jump to the other code word also but but that's not really not not going to happen you have to, you have to really push these stars far away and in the average you will not really go very far from the code word and as long as they are far apart you can always decode so the distance becomes an important factor and that motivates this the definition of minimum distance okay this is a very 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 important fact okay for a code n and k are important yes you should know that very uh, you should know that very well but the next important property is minimum distance of a code okay i'll write down the definition and then i'll relate it to this picture and then you'll see how what an important role it plays in nearest neighbor decoding at least okay so here's the definition the definition is okay i'll write down a very technical definition okay so it's usually denoted d okay d equals minimum over all uv belonging to the code the hamming distance between u and okay sorry u and v okay of course i need u not equal to v okay so u is equal to v then of course all minimum distances will become zero and i don't want that u is not equal to v minimum over all the code words so graphically what's the interpretation it's the distance between the two closest stars right distance between the two closest stars okay okay so from this picture with this graph the graphical picture in view and this definition i'll make a statement next it will be very clear i don't even have to prove it okay it will be very very clear okay okay so this is the statement about error correcting capability okay t equals floor of d minus 1 by 2 errors made by the channel by the channel are correctable for a uh, minimum distance decode for a okay i'm going to do for a code with minimum distance d sorry okay all right why is that true what do i mean by errors made by the channel okay what do i mean by first errors made by the channel it's, it's clear kind of number of bits that it flips right you transmit n bits number of bit it actually flips is the errors made by the channel okay so why is it very clear that if d minus 1 by 2 errors are made by the channel right you can always decode it with nearest neighbor decoding see you know you started with the star right suppose you start at a particular star and any two stars are at least a distance d apart and you go only d by 2 less than half way through so there's no way another code word can be closer to you than your transmitted code word if you had d minus 1 by 2 okay so there's a mathematical way of proving it by contradiction if you say if you went to another code word there should have been two dis two code words which were less than distance d away there'll be a violation it's very easy to write that down also that's why i do the floor of d minus 1 by 2 okay so it's very very easy to okay that's where the error correcting capability comes from you know if any two things are distance d apart you draw circles of diameter d of radius d by 2 what will happen they'll never overlap okay and if you make less than d by 2 errors you will never leave that circle which means you'll always come back to the original code word that you transmitted and all these pictures should be in your mind okay it's very nice to write these expressions but if you don't have that picture in your mind you'll never really truly grasp it okay that's what's happening in a nearest neighbor decoder right you're going to the closest possible code word and if you know the channel never made more than d by 2 errors right you will always go back to the right code word okay of course there can be errors uh, that the decoder itself can go wrong when will it go wrong when the channel makes more than d by 2 errors if it goes into the the sphere of the next code word then you will get into trouble okay is it clear so what people do usually is they'll come back to this picture and then draw radiuses I mean, circles or spheres of radius d by 2 and each of those will be associated with the code word in the middle 
okay it's like your solar system with planets and stars okay each of those planets are associated with the star right so so any time you go to a planet from a star you come back to the star in your decoder that's all it's a very simple picture to keep in your mind okay all right let's go back to this example once again the 3 1 example okay so you see that's what was happening here suppose if i draw the graphical view okay so maybe i should draw the graphical view for the 3 1 pi picture okay so let me show an example here okay what are my stars my two stars are okay 0 0 0 and 1 1 1 okay what are my other vectors okay well there should be only three of them i'm sorry I'll just put them like this. It's not. It's not to mean anything. Okay. So I'll say 0, 0, 1 is here. 0, 1, 0 is here. 1, 0, 0 is here. What are these three other dots? I'll put. I'll put 1, 1, 0 here. 1, 0, 1 here. 0, 1, 1 here. Okay. This is my graphical picture for n equals 3. The 3, 1 code. C equals. 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. Okay, maybe this will clarify your point, what I mean by the stars. There are two code words, k equals 1 and number of code words is 2 power 1, which is 2. Okay, all right. So, <coughs> so what is the sphere? If I draw, so D is what? What is D? Given this code, you can find D, right? How will you find? What's the minimum separation between any two code words? Okay, there are only two code words here. Obviously, D will be 3. It's very easy to see that. Okay, it's a very, very simple uh, thing. What's the error correcting capability? Okay, d minus one by two itself is a whole number. You don't have to do any flooring. You will get one. Okay, it means it can correct one errors. You draw a sphere of radius one around zero zero zero. What are the code words it will include? All these three guys. You re you receive anything in this circle or sphere or what we call it? What will be your decoded code word? Zero zero zero. Okay, and you draw a sphere of radius 1 around 1, 1, 1. You receive any vector within this sphere, what will be your decoded code word? 1, 1, 1. You go back and look at the table, that's exactly what we did. Okay. Yeah, it can, it, that can happen. That can happen. For instance, in this picture, you never got a dot outside of these circles, no? Right? In the general case, you'll have dots outside of these circles. So all kinds of things can happen. And I'll, I'll slowly see some more examples with this picture. You'll see, you'll see how it works out. Is it clear? So this is a simple, simple case. Okay. So let's take a slightly more complicated example where this picture will become uh, more fancy. I'll take, let's say, n equals four because that's pretty much the only thing I can manage. Beyond that, it's very tough. Okay. And I'll take. Uh, what shall we take? Shall we take k equals one or uh, what shall we take? K equals 2? You like K equals 2? Okay. Okay, what do you want the code to be? Hey, I'm doing, I'm going to 430, right? Everybody knows. Okay. So C is, we'll take the all 0, we have to take the all 0, and we'll take 0, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 0, 0. Take 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so that's a reasonable looking code. Is it linear? Be careful before you answer that question, right? Right? It's a tough thing to... Yeah, it is linear. <laughs> okay, so how do you check? If I give you a set of 2 power k vectors, binary vectors, how will you check if it's, lin if it's a linear code or not? What's one way of checking it? If it is a linear code... No, oh, it's, not, it's not so easy to check. Okay, so it might it might, might be very involved. Okay, but it's not necessary. But believe me, it's a linear code. But you start with the basis and if you want... Try all linear combinations. It's a low code. Okay, right? That's a that's a code word. Okay, so let's uh, let's a, that's a code linear code. Okay, so let's try to do this graphical picture. Okay, so you'll see a lot of interesting things will emerge from this graphical picture. Okay, so if I draw a sphere of okay, what's minimum distance? Okay, that's important. Let's let's find out minimum distance. What's minimum distance? Minimum distance is two, right? Everybody agrees two. There are there are code words which are a distance. 
two apart. So what's error correcting capability? Zero, right? So you cannot correct. Technically, you cannot correct any error. Okay, so it's it's a strange, strange, strange situation. Okay, but can you have a maximum likelihood decoder? Yeah, of course you can have a maximum likelihood decoder. Nothing from nothing prevents you from going to the nearest star, except that you're not guaranteed that you'll always go to the transmitted star even if you make one error. Okay, so you can see which is the code word which will cause confusion. For instance, which is the received word which will cause confusion? I'm sorry. Zero zero, 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 zero one zero for instance. Zero 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 one or zero zero one zero. There are two code words which are same distance away. So what will the maximum likelihood decoder do? Yeah, you can actually decide any one. Okay, and you will not lose anything when it comes to probability of block error. It will be the same. That's what I said. That's what I meant when I said there can be multiple decoding functions which give you the same probability of error, but you can never go low below that. Okay, so you, you can pick any one you like. Okay, right? This is more complicated situations emerging. I mean, you can have uh, more fancy cases uh, this way. Okay, is that clear? So let's try, let's try some other example. Maybe this is this will be more interesting. N equals four, k equals one. Okay, so let's try that. And let me take c to be zero 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 zero. Okay, and maybe I'll take, let's say. One 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 zero. Okay, that's just for fun. No, I mean why not? We'll put one zero. I mean it's probably no real use to it. But I want to show I want to show you some more interesting things can happen with the shape and all these things showing up. I mean it's it's good to see these things because later on you won't see it and when you use it you should you should be comfortable with it. Okay. So what's d? D equals three. You agree? Okay. So what's t? T is one. Okay, do you agree with me? Is that clear? Okay. So if I draw a sphere of radius around 0, 0, 0, what will be the vectors that are in there? Right? 0, 0, 0, 0 itself will be there. It's no problem. Or you can flip any one bit. No, you can you can take a step in any direction. Only one flip is allowed, right? Not more than one flip. One one distance one is allowed. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. Right? If I draw a sphere of radius one around one 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 zero, what will I get? First, first you'll get one 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 zero, or you'll get one 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 one, or you'll get one one zero zero, one zero one zero, or zero one one zero. Okay? Right? So if you receive any code word in this set, what will be your decoded vector? Zero 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 zero. It's no problem. If you receive any code word from this set, what will be your decoded code word? One 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 zero. There's no problem, right? Right? So we now you notice that doesn't exhaust all possible four-bit vectors, right? How many have you gone through? Only ten. There are six other four-bit vectors, and they're not within the sphere, but still they will have to decode to something, right? You can't just leave them hanging. They will be closest to Some code word, okay, and you have to add them to either this or this, depending on what they are close to, okay. So to this, you'll have to add. What else will you add? Zero zero one one. Zero zero one one. Is that fine? Zero one zero one. One zero one zero zero one. He's saying all these three should be added to this set. Is it correct? Or how did I decide that? They should be closer to zero 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 than one one. One zero. Okay, so you see how that is true always, right? Okay, the remaining vectors will be added here. What else will you add here? One one zero one. One one zero one. One one zero one is already there, no? No. No. One one zero one. Zero one is not there. One one zero one. What else? One zero one. One zero one one. Zero one. Zero two one. Okay, these three guys have to be added here, and that will be a maximum likelihood decoder. Okay. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so this is the maximum likelihood decoder. In many cases, you'll see people will be very happy if you can decode just the spheres. Forget about these things which are lying outside of these spheres. If you can decode, right? Only see, you can see why you you'll, you'll not leave the sphere. No, I mean if there's only so many errors, 
you know you'll be in some sphere of uh, suitable radius and it's enough if you decode within that okay you don't have to do the complete maximum likelihood decoding but it's not maximum likelihood decoding you'll have to do this okay so who's going to give me the probability of error for this decoder say same as before <laughs> it's not an acceptable answer for me give me the expression give me the expression <coughs> uh. <coughs> write it down Okay, so, so like he points out, you can you can be very smart and say the last bit will not matter. But how will you do it? I mean, if you have to actually do the computation without knowing any of that, how will you do it? What's the probability of error? You understand how to do this? And I think there are some people who understood, some people have no idea. Okay, suppose I transmit 0000. When will I make an error? If I receive anything from this other block. So I have to compute the probability that 0000 will be received as any one of these guys. That's so many cases. For instance, this one will be p power 3 into 1 minus p. So all those probabilities you'll have to add up. Okay. Likewise, if you transmit 1110, you can receive any one of these guys. All those probabilities you have to add. So you do half times this plus half times that, you'll get the final probability. It will all work out at the end of the day to, like he points out, 3p squared minus. 2p power 3, it has to, right? I mean, the other bit doesn't really matter. Okay? Okay? So, <coughs> so, but you should be comfortable with these calculations. How, 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 why is it that it's making an error? How do you actually compute whether it's making an error or not? All those things you should be reasonably comfortable with. Okay? Any questions? Some things that's disturbing you, now is a great time to ask. If there's some things that are not very clear because this is very important. Later on, you'll see even for the 6.3 code, I cannot write down examples like this very nicely, right? What will happen for the 6.3 code? Okay, my space will have 64 different dots and for e how many stars will there be? 8 different code words. Okay, and then I have to keep drawing spheres around it. It will not work. Okay, it will not be very easy. It will be tough. So, in these cases, it's very very easy and trivial and you should understand it from this point of view. Okay, so now once again let's go back to this 6.3 code which I have beautifully saved. Okay, okay let's go to the 6.3 code. This is my example. Okay, don't don't feel a terrible urge to write down everything I have. All this is going to go on the net. Right? If you find yourself painfully writing down stuff, just look at the screen. It should be fine. Okay, what is the minimum distance for this? Okay, it's a lot of work, right? It's a lot of work, right? You have to take pairs of different code words and then look at their distances and distance is not very easy like for instance if you look at the distance between these two what is the distance two or three three right three so you have to look at all those other distances it's not very very trivial <coughs> okay so now you you'll use the fact that it's a linear code to simplify this computation for linear codes that computation can be simplified what is my minimum distance minimum over all u v belonging to c u not equal to v the Hamming distance between u and v. We'll make an observation about the Hamming distance. The Hamming distance between two vectors is what? The number of places where there is a disagreement or the number of places where they differ. You will see the Hamming distance between two vectors is the same as what's called the weight of u plus v. Okay, what is weight? Weight is number of ones. Okay, weight is defined for one vector. Hamming distance is between two vectors. Weight is defined for one binary vector. It's equal to the number of ones. The Hamming distance between two binary vectors is the weight of the XOR, bitwise XOR of those two vectors. Why is that true? 
wherever they are differing the xor will be 1 wherever they agree the xor will be 0 right you are doing that mod 2 ok but what do I know about linear code the code is linear what do I know you about u plus v u plus v is some other code word w in my code can can that w code word be 0 the all 0 code word in this case it cannot be because I insisted that u should not be equal to v ok so you notice this is the same as minimization over some w in the code w not equal to 0 weight of w right so this is possible only for linear codes ok so remember this is only for linear codes ok if you use this simplification at least for this specific case of a linear code finding the minimum distance is very easy what do you have to do? You have to find the non-zero code word with minimum weight. What is the non-zero code word with minimum weight? There are several of them and the weight happens to be 3. Okay, So you can easily find out that minimum distance is 3. Okay, So it is also use, typical to use this notation NKD code implies what? N is length, K is dimension d is minimum distance ok so <coughs> that clear so that is one sim sim small simplification in minimum distance of linear codes but you see even that is not useful in the general case suppose n equals 1000 k equals 500 I give you a huge generator matrix how will you use even this rule? How many non-zero code words will you generate? You will have to generate 2 power 500 minus 1. It is not possible. Okay. In general, in fact, people have shown in the worst case, finding minimum distance given the generator matrix is a so what is called an NP hard problem. People, people have proven that. So it is a difficult problem. Okay. So it is not very easy to solve. No, you cannot really find that answer. Okay. For small cases, you can look at it and figure it out. Okay. All right. So so that is the, the thing about minimum distance. <coughs> okay. So now you know d equals 3 for my 6.3 example code. Okay. In my 6.3 example code, d was 3. So what is my error correcting capability? 1. Okay. I know error correcting capability is 1. Now go back and use the sphere idea. What, that is, what does this mean? You include all the vectors that are a distance 1 away from each of these code words. There should be no overlap. Okay, You can test that if you want, if you are interested, if you are getting really bored. There will be no overlap. Okay, So let us let's, let's try, try to at least write down a few of these, these guys. Okay. See, it is very easy for me. No? So you notice doing this on the blackboard is quite... Uh, and non trivial okay so you write down all the vectors of that are a distance one away from this what will you get 0 0 0 0 0 1 all the way to 1 0 0 0 0 0 right so maybe i'll write this one alone just for 1 1 1 0 0 1 down to 0 1 1 0 0 1 like likewise you'll get bunch of vectors okay so how many total vectors would you have covered this way just including vectors that are a distance 1 away. How many do I have here? 6, six right? Right. I can choose to flip 1 bit. 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 times 8 is what? 56. Okay. So I have covered only 56 vectors. How many total do I have? 64. So there are 8 other vectors which are outside of that. I also have to decide how I am going to decode that. Okay. You see what we did in the last case, he was, I think, somehow, somehow he came up with all those uh, six extra vectors that were outside and we could easily decide whether it has to go to the all zero vector or 1110. For the n equals 4, k equals 1, it was trivial. For the 63 code, it is not very easy. For the 56 vectors, you know what to do, right? Presumably, you can write it down. Then you will have to figure out what the eight other vectors are, then actually find the nearest code word. Okay? And you will see, surprisingly, for linear codes, a beautiful thing will happen. What do you think will happen by this symmetry of the whole thing? Each one of those vectors will distribute to each one of these things. So you will decode back to 
the code word for eight different received vectors. Okay, that will wonderfully happen. Okay, so beginning with next class, we'll try to prove that and come up with some simplifications for this this process, nearest neighbor decoding for linear codes. Okay, that's the end of this lecture. We'll meet again. Tomorrow.